Oh, so I'm just here with Ian Ellis from New South Wales DPI Fisheries. Yep. Just give us a rundown of what you've got in front of us here, Ian. So we've a bit of a, a bit of an analysis of some satellite imagery to look at where the, the black border in the, the flood 2016 yeah. originated from. There's been some concerns that it's an environmental water has been causing this. Um, that's not the case. It, the main problem is that this flood inundated areas that haven't had the water in a long, long time. Here's some images from the 2010 and 11 flooding, and, and although yeah, there were black water events and fish kills associated with these, late December 2010 we had flooding in the Edible Cool, minor flooding. A couple of months later we had flooding in the Lod and Camp Aspie region. These are different areas, so this is different sources of carbon being picked up by different flood fronts. In March, the image isn't great, but there's flooding down in the Broken Creek and Billabong Creek. That's 2012. Fast forward to 2016, and all of those areas went underwater, and not just not just underwater, they went underwater to a greater extent. This is this is the Edward River up the top here. We'll call through here just before the flood came along this year, 23 September. We got a bit of flooding, minor flooding in the floodplain. October, late October, massive flooding across the floodplain. Farmland, forest down in KP, Farmer, Edward River, heaps of flooding. Already well beyond what happened in 2010, 2011, or 2012. So, this flood is picking up carbon from all this area that's gone underwater that hasn't been underwater for 20 years, and in some cases, more than that. As the flood recedes, we can see where there's still water lying around. So, it covered a lot of country that the, the most recent flood. We'll have a look at another part of the basin. Oh, that's just zooming in on, on the one part of the Edward River as the flood approached. Peak flood as the flood receded. Looking at the Murrumbidgee back in August this year, this is well before flooding, Maud Weir indicated there. Flood started to arrive and inundated some small patches of floodplain. Then the flood really came through, inundated huge areas. Um, the thing about this flood, environmental water targets small billabongs here and there, uh, or small areas of floodplain, nothing like this inundation. So the, the idea that environmental water caused this problem is just, uh, it's just not substantiated. So when was when was environmental water delivered to this area previously? So to these areas, you've got environmental water every year delivered to billabongs or certain creeks or outer branches or, or specific areas. Um, that water sits on the floodplain, but after a couple of months, the initial burn off of carbon has happened. So that flood water, sorry, the environmental water, even though it's gonna be black in color, when it got picked up by this flood, it was already recovering in terms of oxygen depletion. So the oxygen depletion that killed the fish in the last couple of months is due to this flooding, this natural flood. What's not natural is the amount of carbon and nutrients sitting on the floodplain yep. because it hasn't had flush in a couple of decades. And it's the same story as we go downstream. This is, uh, this is the Euston Lakes. Euston's around here. Hatter Lakes, you can see this is environmental water. They get, they get filled. They got filled recently with environmental water. Let's have a look at what the flood did. It took the whole area out, including some, some higher country down the Hatter Lakes. But essentially, if that's your environmentally watered area, look at how much flood plain went underneath with this flood. And that's a big area with environmental water. So but this flood just has just blown, blown the magnitude of inundation out of the water. Now we get to Lake Victoria, Rufus River. This is important because we had a big fish killing here just recently, early November. That's before the flood came along. Flood water starting to arrive, mid-October. So this water was, wasn't black water, but it was certainly low in oxygen. When the flood really started to approach the Lake Vic area, and this is, this is the week that the fish died, you can notice that the, the colour of the floodplain water, it's spreading out more, it's darker. You can actually see darker water through the bottom of Lake Vic, spreading right through, coming out the Rufus. You've got some rubbish water coming from these salty creeks down here into the Rufus River. Essentially, if any Murray cod were trying to flee the Murray up to here because initially there would have been good water quality coming out of the Rufus, ultimately the black water was going to come through from Frenchman's Creek by the lake or through from the Murray floodplain because that's what happened. We're not even at the peak of the flood yet, but that's what we've got um, at the end of November. So this black water was coming through, it was going to take out this area anyway, so unfortunately those poor fish got stuck between a rock and a hard place. It's possible some of them even tried to flee black water in the Frenchman's or in the lake itself and got just belted going through the regulators. So terribly unfortunate, but again, it, most of this floodplain, we can water patches of this with environmental water, but most of this floodplain hasn't been under in more than 20 years.
So that's a, that's a hell of a lot of carbon that's built up over time. It doesn't matter if it's forest or farmland, it's all carbon. Bacteria break it down and suck the oxygen out of the water um, and we get fish killed. So it's flood frequency that's the biggest problem here. I know, thank you.